Hi friends, today I'll be explaining Physics May June 2011 Paper 11. Question 1 states the diagram shows an enlarged drawing of the end of the meter roll. It is being used to measure the length of a small feather. So what we have to calculate is the what is the length of the feather. So we have to calculate measure the length of the feather. So if we start measuring it from the stem, it is at 10 millimeter and then at the end of the feather it is before 30 so it is 29 as 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 and 28 then over here it will be 29 so what we have is 29 minus 10 which will be 19 millimeter as here we have 90 millimeter 29 centimeter millimeter 19 centimeter and 29 centimeter so what we have now measured this length is in millimeter so we will write mark 19 millimeter as our correct answer question 2 states an object moves initially with a constant speed then with constant acceleration which graph shows this motion so when this when the line of a uh, line of the graph for speed and time will be in straight line when it is moving at a constant speed but once it starts accelerating at a constant acceleration so that line will be constant uh, straight line straight sloping line against the speed and time so this it will be like this over here first it states at with constant speed then with with constant acceleration so over here we have constant speed then constant acceleration so p will be the correct answer let's see other answers at answer a first it is increasing at constant acceleration which is wrong because it states with constant speed so speed must be must be in a straight line horizontal so over here it's like sl sloping straight line so this will be wrong then for part c over here it's cost increasing acceleration because in increasing acceleration the speed time curve will be curved upwards and then in part d it will be over here it's decreasing acceleration so the speed time graph will be sloping downwards so part c uh, answer c and answer d will also be wrong so only answer b is correct so we will circle this question 3 states a tennis player hits a ball hard and 0.4 seconds later here's the echo from the wall so we have to calculate how far away is the player from the wall and the speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second so we'll use the speed times formula which is here d is equal to speed times Time. over here we have the speed which is 330 meters per second and multiply by time which is 0 0.4 seconds so 0 0.4 seconds which will be 132 meters but over here there's another twist as the person hits the ball at the wall and 0 0.4 seconds later here's the echo from the wall so the sound wave have traveled to the wall and then reflected back towards the person so there's double distance so there the distance is multiplied by 2 i mean so we will divide 132 meters by 2 which will be 66 meters so how far is the player from the wall so we will mark six, 66 meters 
as the correct answer. Question 4 states which statement about mass and weight is correct. So mass is the amount of matter in an object and its standard international is kilograms whereas weight is a gravitational force of an object and it is measured in newtons. So as weight is a gravitational weight is a gravitational force, gravitational force and mass is amount of matter, amount of matter of matter. So over here mass and weight are both forces. This is wrong. Neither mass or nor nor weight is a force. This is also wrong. And then only mass is force, which is wrong. And answer D is only weight is a force, which is correct. And so we will mark D as correct answer. Question 5 states the diagram shows a balance being used to find the weight of the baby. The weight of the basket can be ignored. At equilibrium, the pivot is near nearer to the weight W than to the baby. What is the weight of the baby? So first of all, as pivot is closer to the W and further away from the baby. This is why, be why because if we move the weight away from the pivot over here, then the W will have more force, have mo more force being have more force pulling the B downwards. So it so this means that W or weight is heavier than the baby. So what is the weight of the baby? It is less than W and more than W. If we move the same scenario, if we move the W. To the right side so there will be more force being exerted by w and then it will pull the beam downwards making the pass it go up so part answer b is also wrong then the weight of the baby what's the weight of the baby it's w that is also wrong because the distance between the baby and the pivot is not equal to the distance between w and the pivot so answer c will be wrong and then d over here it says impossible to tell that is not true because we are using the weight to see if the baby is heavier than w or lighter than w so there is a possibility that we can tell how much is the weight of the basket so a will be the answer stating less than w so question six states a cube of side two centimeter is placed on a b balance on a balance what is the density of the cube so the formula for density is d is equal to mass divided by volume so over here the mass is 7.2 grams so 7.2 grams divided by volume which is which has 2 centimeter on each side as it is a cube so we'll do 2 multiply by 2 multiply by 2 multiply by 2 this will be 7.2 divided by 2 to the 4 4 to the 8 so this will be 0 0.9 grams per centimeter cube. So over here 0 0.9 grams per centimeter cube will be the final answer. So we'll circle answer A for question 6. So question 7 states objects with different masses are hung on a spring. The diagram shows how much the spring stretches. So the extension of the spring is directly proportional to the mass hung on it. What is the mass of the object M? So over here first, uh, the original length of the spring is 10 cm. So length is 10 cm. Then the extended length using 100 gram is here length is 
ट्वेंटी सेंटीमीटर विद वेट ऑफ हंड्रेड ग्राम एंड देन थर्ड ओवर हेयर वी हैव द एक्सटेंडेड लेंथ ऑफ थर्टी सेंटीमीटर हेयर यू राइट लेंथ ऑफ थर्टी सेंटीमीटर एंड वेट विच वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट सो सो ओवर हेयर एल इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी सेंटीमीटर एंड सो वी विल सप्लाई टेन फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी सेंटीमीटर सो वील राइट ट्वेंटी माइनस टेन विच इज टेन सेंटीमीटर सो विद द वेट ऑफ हंड्रेड ग्राम्स द स्प्रिंग वॉज स्ट्रेच बाई टेन सेंटीमीटर सो वील राइट टेन डिवाइडेड बाई हंड्रेड विच इज जीरो पॉइंट वन सो over here we have written 0.1 for 100 grams now over here we have over here we have 30 cm of stretched spring with which we have in which we have to calculate the mass so we will write 30 minus the original length which is 10 so 10 is equal to 20 cm So we'll divide twenty centimeter by zero point one. So which is two hundred grams. So the weight of this m is two hundred grams. Two hundred grams. So we will mark parts answer C as our final answer. Question eight states which row gives an example of the stated form of energy. So the first form of energy is gravitational force, and the example is the energy due to the movement of a train along a level track. So there is no force that is pushing the train to the ground and stopping the train. So gravitational force is not related to this example. Then. Second form of energy is internal energy. The energy due to the flow of cathode rays in a cathode ray tube. So there is no internal energy as cathode rays are moving towards the cathode ray tube. And the third is kinetic energy. The energy due to the position of a swimmer standing on a high level board. This is not a kinetic energy. This is a potential energy. So This is also wrong. And the fourth is strain energy, the energy due to the compression of the springs in a car seat. So when the springs in the car seat are squeezed, which when the distance between the spokes uh, between the springs is reduced, there is a strain energy. So answer D is correct. And then question nine states which energy resource is used to generate energy electricity by first. boiling water so in hydroelectric the energy is created by movement of water and then there is tides which is generated by the winds of the tides and then the waves which is created by the waves which i'm making the Question nine states which energy resource is used to generate electricity by first boiling water. So hydroelectric is used when water passes through a dam. So this is wrong. Then tides, which is created by the winds, wind waves of the water, and then third is the waves, which is created by the waves at the sea sides. So nuclear fission is the correct answer. So we will circle answer B as our final answer. Question nine states: Two farmers use an electricity-powered elevator to lift bales of hay. All the bales of hay have the same mass. As sunset rises approaches, they increase the speed of the motor so that more Bales are lifted up in a given time. How does it affect the work done in lifting each bale and the usual output power of the motor? So first is work done in lifting each bale. As they stated that they increase the speed of the motor, not the 
and they have not raised the weight of the bale. So the work done in lifting each bale, uh, in each bale, there is no change. So over here we will write no change, and over here useful output power of the motor as they have increased the speed of the motor. So the electrically powered elevator will transfer bale of hay from this person to this person quickly so the output power has increased so over here here it has increased so d is the correct answer and a in a it states work done in lifting each bale increases that's wrong because there is no increase in mass of each bale so this so this is wrong and the useful output power of the motor decreases here they state that they increase the speed of the motor so the output power should also increase so this is also wrong and then b it states work done increases this is also wrong as the same as a and over here it increases which is correct but over here it states work done lifting each wheel no change so this is correct but over here all power has decreased so this is wrong so answer b is correct so question level states a brick with flat rectangular sides rests on a table the brick first it's uh, resting on a larger surface area then the brick is now turned so it rests on the table on its smallest face so this is the smallest surface area how does it affect the force and the pressure exerted by the brick on the table so over here what is force so force is the amount of weight that is ex that the earth exerts on the object so over here if example the brick is 5 kgs 5 grams so over here the, there is no change in weight of the brick so here also it will be 5 grams so the force has been unchanged then in pressure first it was pushing on the table at larger surface area now it's pushing on smaller surface area so the as in physics it's it states that at smaller surface area there will be more pressure there will be more pressure being applied on the on the base or on the surface so over here the pressure has increased so c will be the correct answer So question 12 states the diagram shows two mercury barometers. Barometer 1 is measuring atmospheric pressure on day 1 and barometer 2 is measuring atmospheric pressure on day 2. Which statement is correct? So in barometer 1, day 1, there is a sm uh, smaller barometer inverted and in day 2 we have a larger barometer inverted. So over here first we need to see the mercury levels in each parameter so over here we have over here the lab mercury levels in both parameters are equal and in base here as in base this is a smaller base and here there is a larger base so in smaller base there will be small uh, lower level of mercury and in larger base there will be higher level of mercury so we should not use this difference as the question state which statement is true here it says atmospheric pressure on day one is less than atmospheric pressure on day two so we should not use the pressure exerted on this we should use the amount wait over here then the B states atmospheric pressure on day 1 is the same as atmospheric pressure on day 2. This is also wrong because atmospheric pressure changes every day. So point C states the pressure at point 
x is less than the pressure at point y so over here the pressure is also not less it's more so in part d it states the pressure at point x is the same as the pressure at point y because over here the atmospheric pressure is exerting on point x and making the mercury level rise up to this level whereas over here the same atmospheric pressure is pushing on the mercury over here and making the mercury level rise up to this level whether it's a smaller barometer or a larger barometer so the pressure will always stay the same so d will be the correct answer question 13 states a sealed gas cylinder is left outside on a hot sunny day what happens to the average speed of the molecules and to the pressure of the gas in the cylinder as the temperature rises so as there are gas molecules gas in the cylinder so when they are heated the average speed will obviously increase so there will be a, a, the average speed of the gas molecule will rise so over here it will rise then the gas pressure as the gas molecules are moving at a higher speed than average so the pressure inside the cylinder will also increase as the gas molecules are exerting greater force on the on the wall of the cylinder so the gas pressure will also rise so d will be the correct answer so question 14 states when a liquid evaporates some molecules escape from it and its temperature changes from where do the molecules escape and what is the effect on the temperature of the liquid so over here i will explain so, there's a container of water being boiled so hot water molecules rises hot water molecules rises upward towards the edge of the surface and over here they will be hot water and at base there will be cold water so once the hot water is at the highest temperature these bubbles will escape and evaporate so the molecules that escape are from the surface of the liquid uh, from the surface of the liquid and for the second the temperature of the liquid so as hotter water molecules escape the surface there will be more proportion of colder water molecules so the temperature of the liquid will decrease so over here it will decrease and over here escape from the liquid surface so answer c will be the correct one so question 15 states the diagram shows a thermometer calibrated in degrees celsius what are the values of the lower fixed point and the upper fixed point on the celsius scale so over here they have shown us the thermometer which shows the range from minus 10 to 110 degrees so we should not be uh, you should not be confused by this readings because they are showing the values from minus 10 to 110 degrees but they stated that the thermometer is calibrated in degrees celsius so the range of degrees celsius is from 0 degrees to 100 degrees so over here minus 10 and 110 which is wrong because that's for alcoholic meter alcohol thermometer then for b lower fixed point is 0 degrees celsius and upper fixed point is 20 degrees that's also wrong because the thermometer over here is showing the temperature of the area or something so over there it is 20 degrees celsius so this doesn't mean or they didn't have to have stated that the, the thermometer is placed in the boiling water so this is also wrong that for c over here they stated that it is calibrated in degrees celsius so zero degrees and 100 degrees 
so c is the correct and for d it's 220 degrees at 100 degrees that's also wrong because for 20 degrees this is the temperature of something which didn't state so 20 degrees is wrong but 100 degrees is correct so answer d is correct Question 16 states an ice cube at temperature of 0 degree is put into a drink at a temperature of 10 degrees. After a short time, some of the ice has melted and the drink has cooled to a temperature of 8 degrees. What is the temperature of the remaining ice? As the ice was melting, so it has cooled the drink from 10 degrees to 8 degrees. But it states that there, there are some remaining ice. So... The remaining ice will be to zero degree because they have it haven't melted fully and dissolved in the drink. So the remaining ice will be zero degrees and so A will be the correct answer. Question 70 states that experiment is set up to find out which metal is the best conductor of heat. Balls are struck stuck on with wax to rods are made from different metals as shown in diagram 1. The rods are heated at one end. Some of the balls fall off leaving some as shown in the diagram 2. Which labeled metal is the best conductor of heat? So over here we have to see which me metal is the best conductor of heat and so which will quickly melt the wax at the end of these rods and release the balls from the metal so in diagram 2 when rod a is heated there are four balls on each rod so in rod a three balls have fallen off and there's only one remaining and in b there are four balls and then none of these balls have fallen off so this means that B is not a good conductor of heat. Then in C, there are four balls, but two balls have been fallen off. So this is also good heat, conductor of heat, but not better than A. And in D, there is the same scenario as B. As four, there are four balls, and none of these balls have fallen off. So B and D are not a good conductor of heat, whereas C is a better conductor of heat than B and D. But the question state which is the which labeled metal is the best conductor of heat. So A is the best conductor of heat. Question 18 states food is kept in a cool box which uses two ice packs to keep it cool. Where should the ice packs be placed to keep all the food as cool as possible? So as ice pack is cold and cold air is denser than hot air so so cold air particle cool air particles will have float downwards and so this shows that in the ice box the ice packs should be kept above the food so it this will keep the food as cool as possible so over here a states both at the bottom of the box wrong both at the top of the box this is correct and for third answer it's one at the front and one at the back there will be no effect there will be no effect on keeping the food cold and then these states one on the left and one on the right this will also not keep the food cold cold so answer b is correct which states both ice packs should be placed at the top of the box so B is the correct answer. Question at these states water waves can be used to show reflection, refraction and diffraction. For each of these which shows whether or not the speed of the water waves changes. So in reflection the water waves are reflected so there is no change in the speed. For refraction yes because when the water waves uh, passes through a denser area it changes its direction and so the speed also changes. It increases or decreases and for diffraction no because over here it's the same volume uh, same density of water so 
for diffraction the speed of the water waves is not changed so b is the correct answer question 20 states a vertical stick is dipped up and down in water at p in two seconds three wave crests are produced on the surface of the water which statement is correct the distance x is the amplitude of the waves this is wrong because this is a distance between the between the two drop two highest point of the waves so this is wrong then for second the distance y is the wavelength of the waves this is also wrong because it is not a wavelength between two points so this is wrong each circle represent a wave friend this is correct because it's showing the highest point of the wave so c is the correct and for d the frequency of the wave is three hertz over here it states that in two seconds three waves are crests are created so this should be six three times two is six hertz so over here the frequency of the wave is 3 hertz so this is also wrong so answer c is correct the diagram shows the dispersion of white light by a glass prism why does dispersion occurs when white light enters the glass because in white light there are seven different colors which is roy big roy big so in R is for red and V is for violet. So over here each color has different densities. So violet is the most dense, is way more dense than red color. So violet slows down very quickly as compared to red color. So so there is a dispersion between violet and red. So over here in Answers A is the frequency of red light decreases more than violet. That is wrong. The frequency of violet decreases more than that of red light. Wrong. I said that the speed of violet decreases way more than red red color. So the speed of red light decreases more than red more than violet light. That is also wrong. And in D it says it states the speed of violet light decreases more than that of red light. So D is the correct answer. So question 22 states a thin converging lens is used to produce on a screen a focused image of a candle. Various focused images are produced on the screen by moving the lens and the screen backwards and forwards. Which statement is correct? So over here, there is a converging lens. Converging lens. So over here, there is a candle. So when when we uh, when the image of the candle passes through the converging lens, it first goes straight over here till the middle of the lens, and then it refracts over here. The same it goes from here and then again it refracts. So over here it will be shown like this. So over here in question states which statement is always correct? The image is at the principal focus of the lens. No, because it's inverted. Then the image is bigger than the object. No, it will be the same size. The image is closer to the lens than the object. Wrong. And then the image is inverted. Yes, because we, the, uh, because over here it's inverted upside down. So D is the correct answer. Question 23 states sound travels by wave motion. Which property of waves causes echoes? So echoes are caused by the reflection of sound waves against a surface so over here diffraction this is wrong for dispersion no because if it's dispersed dispersed then uh, echoes will not be heard heard then in reflection yes because uh, sound waves travel by wave motion and when it's reflected back this will cause echoes so c is the correct answer and for d refraction 
this answer wrong. Question 24 states, a student listens to a machine that makes a sound of different frequencies. He can only hear one of the sounds. Which frequency of a sound is the student able to hear? So the range of the audible sound that a normal human can hear is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So over here 2 hertz, this is below the minimum hearing level so this is wrong 10 hertz this is also lower than the normal hearing level so this will be wrong and for 2 kilohertz yes because it's more than 20 hertz and less than 20 kilohertz so this is correct and for d 30 kilohertz so this is way beyond the upper maximum limit of 20 kilohertz so this is wrong so the final answer will be answer c so question 25 states which test could be used to find which end of the magnet is the north pole so by putting the magnet near a ferrous metal will not tell us whether it's a north pole or south pole because ferrous metal metal is not a magnetic metal then part c states <clears throat> putting it near a non-ferrous metal this will also not tell us if the magnet is the north pole or south pole and then in d putting it near a steel spoon as steel spoon is not a uh, non magnetic so it will not attract to the north pole or south pole so for a putting it near a compass needle because as compass needle is also a magnet so it will attract the north pole of the magnet so it will tell us where if it has where its north pole is located so a is the correct answer so question 26 states in two separate experiments a magnet is brought near to an unmagnetized iron bar this causes the bar to become magnetized so in experiment one when south pole is brought near to the iron bar so the pole induced at x will be north pole because it will be attracted and uh, it the pole over here should be opposite to that over here so over here it's south so in x it will be north then for experiment 2 when a magnet with north poles uh, on the right side is brought closer to iron bar over here we will have south pole and then on the y side we will have north pole so it will be north pole and north pole so a will be the correct answer so question 27 states an ammeter and an and an 18 ohm resistor are connected in series with a battery the reading of the ammeter is 0.5 amps the resistor of the battery at the ammeter can be ignored so what is the electromotive force of the battery so if you have to calculate the uh, electromot electromotive force of the battery then we will multiply 18 ohms with 0 0.5 amps so 0 0.5 multiplied by 18 ohm which will be 9 volts so here we have calculated the force of 9 volts which will be answer b answer a cannot be answer a cannot be correct because in here it's written 19 9 newtons which is not used in in emf or electromotive force whereas in c it here over here we have divided 18 divided by 0 0.5 which will be 36 but newtons is not used in electromotive force and then in d over here we have not divided 18 by 0 0.5 so this will be also wrong so 9 volts will be the correct answer which is b question dot eight states a polythene rod repels an inflated balloon hanging from a nylon thread what charges must the rod and the balloon carry so when the polythene rod and inflated balloon have re repelled repelled so this means that 
inflated balloon and the polythene rod both carry the same charges or like charges so here the rod and balloon carry opposite charges if they carry opposite charges they will be attracted then in b the rod and balloon carry like charges so they will be repelled so b is the correct answer then in c the rod is charged but the balloon is not so if one thing is charged and the other is not then they will be attracted and in d here the balloon is charged but the rod is not so this means this is also the same scenario in which the balloon and the rod will be attracted so b is the correct answer question 29 states which circuit includes a capacitor and what does the capacitor do in this circuit so in which circuit the capacitor is used is it using is it used in potential divider or in time delay so here it in the purpose of capacitor is used the purpose that the capacitor is used in is time delay so time delay is correct then what does the capacitor do so the capacitor stores the energy so that when there is no energy it can use that energy to power the circuit so stores energy so d will be the correct answer so question 30 state 30 states a student sets up the circuits shown the switch is open or off which lamps are on and which are off so here the switch is open and then the current moves through the wire from battery and first it lights up the bulb x then over here there's a breakdown so it will use this alternate route and from here it will light up uh, this lamps lamp y and then from here it will lamp y z lamp z will also be light lightened up so light lamp x will be lit then lamp y will also be on and lamp z will also be on so over here on 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 so answer d will be correct and this will be the final answer Question 31 states a diagram shows a thermistor in a potential divider. The voltmeter is connected across the thermistor. The graph shows how the resistance of the thermistor changes with temperature. As the thermistor becomes warmer, what happens to the resistance and what happens to the reading on the voltmeter? So as the temperature increases, the, electro, uh, the current in the electrons in the thermistor are moving rapidly so are moving rapidly so this will uh, and will transfer greater amount of energy in less time as compared to in the current moving through the voltmeter so the voltmeter reading will decrease voltmeter reading will decrease and the resistance will also decrease because in less time the electrons in the circuit will travel as through the short short length as compared to the longer length through the voltmeter so the resistance will also decrease so a will be the final answer and in b the resistance decreases but voltmeter reading increases this is not true because as there are less electrons passing through the voltmeter so the voltmeter reading will also decrease and in C, resistance increases. This is wrong because this is a shorter circuit as compared to this. And over here, it's more at it's it is at higher temperature, so greater electrons will be transferred from this end to this end. So A will be the correct answer. Question 32 states. In this circuit, a component at X automatically protects the wiring from overheating if there is a fault. Which components are suitable to use at X? So, at a component at X automatically protects the wiring. So, it, the, at X, there should be a component that should protect the wiring from overheating if there is a fault. So, if there is a fault, they can, we can use a fuse. To protect the circuit 
to, to protect the wiring from overheating and the second that we can use is a circuit breaker circuit breaker because this will automatically automatically detect if there is a fault and overheating then it will break the circuit so over here a circuit breaker a fuse or a switch so a switch cannot be used because in that we don't know whether there is overheating or the, whether there is a fault so this will cause a fire in the circuit so A is wrong and then for B only a circuit breaker or a fuse this is correct and in C only a circuit breaker or a switch we cannot use a switch as I explained that we don't know whether if there is a fault or not and if we keep it on for a long time there will be a fire on this circuit then only a fuse this is correct but we need we also need to use the circuit breaker so b is the correct answer question 33 states which graph shows how the output voltage varies with time for a simple ac generator so in ac generator the voltage moves up and down constantly from positive voltage to negative voltage and so this will have career and, and so this will be the this will how it will be shown in the graph for a over here it's always positive so this is not correct it should be like this so for b it's positive then it stays at zero volts then again positive this is also wrong and then c it's positive then negative then positive so c will be the correct answer and then d first it moves and positive and it stays at zero voltage then in negative volts then in z at zero volts so this will be wrong so uh, answer c will be the correct one as the voltage in ac a simple ac generator will move from positive to negative and then from negative to positive constantly so c will be the right answer Question 34 states a magnet is suspended from a spring so that it can move freely inside a coil. The coil is connected to the sensitive zero center zero ammeter. Over here the coil is connected to the sensitive center zero ammeter and it is held stationary and here the magnet is connected to the spring which is moving uh, from which the magnet is moving up and down constantly so what does the ammeter show when the magnet repeatedly moves slowly up and down so when the when magnet moves inside the center zero ammeter needle will shift towards left then when the magnet um, is when the magnet leaves the co stationary coil then the center zero ammeter will the reading will go towards right so over here the reading constantly changes from left to right and right to left so a will be the correct answer over here in b a steady reading to the left this will occur when the magnet moves uh, is inserted into the coil and then stayed and it re rested over in the coil for some period of time so then the ammeter will show the needle on left side over here in C a steady reading to the right so when the magnet is constant is uh, being removed steadily then the ammeter reading will show towards right and then in D a steady reading of zero this is when the magnet is left in the coil and is not moved and is not moved then the center zero ammeter will show zero reading over here the question states it the magnet is moved repeatedly moved slowly up and down so a will be the correct answer question 35 states the diagram shows a simple step down transformer used to decrease voltage which part is the primary coil so primary coil is the one which is mainly used so the voltage is decreased in the down, step down from the transformer so over here there will be high voltage so this will be the primary coil and then over here there is a secondary coil in which there will be lower voltage as 
the higher voltage has been stepped down by the transformer into lower voltage and so D will be the primary coil which this springs so this will be the primary coil. So question 36 states the diagram shows a cathode ray tube. What are the correct labels for X and for Y? So over here the power supply is connected to the component X and to the component Y. So in answer A negative anode and positive cathode this will not uh, attract the cathode ray and so there will be no effect on the screen and then in B there will be negative cathode and positive anode in this if the cathode is negative and anode is positive so anode will attract the energy from negative cathode and this will create a image or a laser beam on the screen so B will be the correct answer and in C positive anode and negative cathode so in an at the anode will uh, at the anode will attract electrons from the cathode negative cathode and they will and it will not display any uh, image on the screen so c will be the wrong answer so b will be the correct answer for 36 Question 37 states a beam of cathode rays passes between two parallel metal plates connected to a high voltage DC power supply. Which path does the beam follow? So over here the cathode ray passes are between two hmm, parallel metal plates connected to the high voltage DC power supply. So cathode rays are most of the most of the time cathode rays are negatively charged. So they will be attracted towards the positively charged ions over here. Over here in D, it's reflected back, which is wrong. Over here in B, here it's going in a straight line. So this is also wrong because cathode rays are neg negatively charged. So they will be attracted to, to towards the positive plate. And here C will be the correct answer. A will not be the correct answer because yeah, cat cathode rays are negatively charged so they will be repelled against away from the negative plate so C will be the correct answer. So question 38 states which row shows the relative ionizing effect and penetrating abilities of A alpha particles and beta particles. So the ionizing effect alpha particle are greater huh? has more higher grating higher greater ionizing effect as compared to better particles because in short range uh, alpha will have more effect as compared to better particles so over here I, alpha is has a higher ionizing effect whereas in penetrating ability better particles are uh, better in penetrating than alpha because it has greater uh, power as compared to alpha so here it will be better particles so b will be the correct answer question 39 states a powder contains 400 mg of a radioactive material that emits alpha particles the half life of the material is five days so the radiative material has 400 the material has 400 milligram at zero days of that emits alpha particles then at five days the half life of the material is five days so at five days it will be 200 milligram then the question states what mass of that material remains after 10 days so if after five days there is 200 milligram then after 10 days there will be half of 200 will be 100 milligram so c will be the correct answer question 40 states an atom of the element lithium has a nucleon number of 7 and a proton number of 3 which diagram represents the neutral atom of lithium so in atoms proton number is equal to electron number so if there's an unequal number then it will be 
either positively charged or negatively charged so in a there are two electrons and three protons so this is not neutral in b we have three protons and three electrons but here we have only one neutron and in lithium we have four neutrons so in c we have four neutrons three protons and three electrons this is correct and in d we have four neutrons and two three protons but over here we have one two three four five six, seven seven electrons so it is also negatively charged so c will be the correct answer